On this episode of Purposely Curious, we sit down with Michael Silver to discuss journalism in the entertainment and sports world under our current climate. We delve into some current news in these industries and a bit more. Join us and get nice and cozy as this episode starts now. Hello, everyone. Um, today, I have a special guest, and I want to introduce Michael Silver. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you, Mary? I'm good. Um, thank you for having me. Uh, I'm here in Orange County, yes. so this was nice. <laughs> Welcome to the OC, and uh, thank you for having me on your show. I appreciate it. Oh, yeah. Thanks. I, like I said, I'm, I'm uh, actually excited to see what we are going to put out today <laughs> yeah i honestly haven't done a podcast in quite some time so i was honored and uh there's there's a lot going on so who knows we'll see where this goes yeah so can you tell everyone what it is you do sure uh let's try to think of the simplest way of a, a, a journalist i am a sports and music journalist that's the best uh broad way to paint myself but um i've worked in music and sports and entertainment for the last decade or so and i write I do social media content, uh, video editing, still working on that scheme uh, or that side of things, but I usually cover the main sports, NBA, NFL, Major League Baseball, uh, even UFC action. And then, of course, fortunately, there's lack of concerts to go to right now, yeah. but I have in the past gone to many shows and either been lucky to get a uh, credential as a photographer and mm -hmm. take fo photos from the stage or just as a journalist and write a review. Sometimes even go backstage to interview the artists and write a profile or feature articles. Um, I've been published in a number of websites and magazines. And yeah, I, I just love being around, you know, those creative minds. And it just feels like we're in a void of that right now just because of a lack of entertainment options yeah yeah it's uh been crazy few months a crazy year i guess a lot of people there's a lot of memes out there about 2020 being like the worst and longest year ever <laughs> yes 2020 has been challenging i mean that's like the to least say to least, say yeah. and i don't know i i try to be an optimistic and think things are going to get better just in general mm -hmm. <laughs> um regardless if it's local national and global but yeah things have been kind of weird so i'm just trying to find that glimmer of hope and hope for the best for all of us yeah so how has it affected you um with you know er, i know things are starting to open up now sports is back but mm -hmm. like when everything completely shut down i yeah. mean it must have been hard sure of course i mean we'll go back to let's say february march right that was right kind of where it kind of mm -hmm. unfolded i was still working at fox sports in la and I was working for NFL uh, broadcasts, especially on Sundays. That's the main day of football. And when you know the Super Bowl came and went in Miami, and J Lo oh. and Shakira. As a 49ers fan, that was that uh, was a sad day sorry, for me. Sorry, sorry, I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but once that season wrapped up, my contract wrapped up. It's basically a seasonal position. Mm -hmm. uh, I was I was a digital researcher, you know, keeping track of stats and info for the games. So when the season ended, my job kind of was put on pause. And then March happened, and we all know how it's unfolded since. So it's been tricky because there's been a lack of options and, you know, things that are going on around us. Um, I was lucky most recently um, I was a social media editor with Complex Networks um, and all their handling, all their sports and music mm -hmm. and their main account on social media. So I did that for a few months, and I enjoyed it, but it was remote work. And I think a lot of people are still learning on the fly, how to adjust to working from home. Right, right. I love being a homebody. I know we talked about that earlier, just our personalities, but yeah. going to an office or just being out in public, going to a game, going to a concert, those are the interactions I look forward to. Mm -hmm. And when you're sitting at home, stuck on a computer for eight to 10 hours a day, it gets a little mundane. Yeah, yeah, you you want that interaction and or you were able to go to these games and concerts mm -hmm. and work in that sense. And exactly. so, yeah. So, working from home <laughs> so it's been an adjustment i think like all of us have had to make but you make the best of it and uh, you just roll with the punches and just hopefully it's gonna get better <laughs> yeah i mean I re have you been seeing a change now for the better i mean in, in terms of so? in terms of entertainment value sure sports have come back right so the nba is doing their thing down in uh, they call it the bubble in orlando florida they're mm -hmm. playing all their games in one location uh, Major League Baseball has come back 
they've had some hiccups where some teams had the virus and they had to postpone games, but the rest of the teams have continued on. Um, the big question mark, I think, is football. The NFL and college football is supposed to start up in the next you know, matter of weeks. So we'll see how that's going to be handled because they don't have a bubble format and it's hit or miss. It could either be a great situation or it could be terrible. I don't know. But um, to answer your question, it's gotten better. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the fact that it's back is better in general. Yeah. Yeah. Because even in Europe, you know, the soccer league, they're, I think there's no crowds. They're just playing... Yes. Um, but uh, w- for you as a journalist, mm-hmm. is that going to bring you work as far as like, I hope writing? So. Yeah, I mean, on a freelance level, because like the LA Times, I would love to work for them. I don't know if they're hiring. I should probably look into that. <laughs> but um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, yeah, it, it, I think there's going to be more opportunities, like you said, because now that the games are coming back and even on the music side, for example, they're doing drive-in movies, or sorry, drive-in concerts, yeah. and these different types of experiences where at least there's entertainment value, and there's some type of show worth paying your money. You know, sitting in your car, not exactly something that people look forward to doing yeah. for a concert, but you know what I did for the first time recently was a drive-in movie. Mm. Never done it before. Mm. I went to the Newport Beach Film Festival. Well, that's what they normally call it. This was a drive-in movie version of it. Yeah. It was on the rooftop of the Fashion Island Mall in, in Newport Beach, and we saw um, a surf documentary. And it was really cool. I really enjoyed it. And, again, it was something new, so maybe that's one positive you take away from this whole experience is you trying new things that you didn't think about. Because how long have drive-in movie theaters been around? Yeah. They've been around for a while, but it was just like a dying cause, you know. Right. It's I... I, I Literally with uh, like two episodes ago, I had Eddie Sato and Mm -hmm. and his company would put up concerts, you know, um, festivals. And so they had to pivot. Mm. So what did they start doing is like they would build a stage for drive in stuff and different like organizations, whether it was a movie. He said comedians came and used it. And Mm -hmm. uh, I think the LA Galaxy did and the Lakers did. Nice. Um, So, you know, it's almost like everyone drives up. But then he was talking about that. That's, you know, the amount of people you would have if it wasn't driving. So even though they're making some money or if it's free, you know, it's still they're still losing money. Of course. But it's it's good, I guess. There's going to be some industry shifts. And so maybe the drive in is here to stay, maybe. I think it's definitely <laughs> going to create more of an opportunity for people to be like, hey, you know what? That was a success, even because people were forced to do that. Now they're going to keep coming back if we offer them new opportunities, new, ex- you know, exclusive things. Yeah. Um, I was just thinking off the top, there's been some concerts that have had some negative, you know, um, feedback, feedback, and, like yeah. Was the chain smokers? Yeah, so saw that? I saw that. So they were not adhering. People were not adhering to staying in their little boxes where their cars were, or if, yeah. you know. And I, I believe they say some people did get it. Oh, I, I didn't hear of yeah. what the outcome was, but I just saw like you know a little clip online, and just obviously people were like rushing the stage, and then the main caption, like the memes were like you really sacrificed like your health for the chain smokers. Like, (laughs) is that really worth your time and money and health? Uh, so that kind of made me laugh, but yeah, to the, to your point, um, now that there's more value out there and things are starting to return to what we call normal, Mm -hmm. (laughs) whatever level that normalcy is, you know, it's better than nothing. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And and you and I were just talking about how I wanted to do this podcast Mm -hmm. and always thought about it for like what seems like forever and the pandemic hit at a good time because I had put out like two or three episodes and I was kind of slacking and Mm -hmm. then it hit and I didn't have anything to do so for me it was a good thing to kind of get this hobby going and yeah now I'm like super into it and like motivated and I took up yoga about two months ago Mm. not to say I'm a yogi by any stretch or anything extravagant but it was just something that I try to find a, a new, you know, um, outsource, you know, something just a new, a new life. Put your blend. energy into something. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, I could go exercise outside all day and run and play basketball. Well, they actually took the rims off the local parks here. I don't know if they did in your neighborhood. Yeah. So there's been some, you know, obstacles, if you may, in that sense for, ath- for athletics. But, um, yeah, even yoga has been a nice, like surprise in my life. Just something new helps you breathe and just, you know, get your inner peace. Um, but I'm glad that 
this time has given you the opportunity to, as well to expand on your, you know, art, artistic side. And yeah. I think a podcast is great. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see what I'm just going to go with it. So nice. No, I think so far so good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it got us together, right? Absolutely. Like, <laughs> um, but um, I know we were kind of talking about what's transpired in the last week mm. with sports being back. Um, and you know, again, not trying to go into too much of politics, mm-hmm. but it's one of those things you can't necessarily hard to avoid. Hard to yeah. avoid, and something that I'm sure journalists are having to cover. And sure. you being a journalist, Absolutely. it's like a big story. Yes, I mean, not to rehash, but we know there was this gentleman in uh, Wisconsin. He got shot seven times in the back by the police, um, and one of the NBA teams, the Milwaukee Bucks, you know, from that state. And they were due to play a game. This was this past Wednesday, I believe. And they just decided we're going to stay in our locker room and we're going to, you know, boycott this game and take a political stance and say, you know, change needs to be made in our countries, specifically them in their state, um, you know, for racial equality. Mm -hmm. Um, And so you think in theory they would have talked to the other NBA players because they're all, you know, in this one central location in Orlando, but they didn't either have the time or the reasoning they chose not to. And a lot of the players from what I've read online and, you know, seen on ESPN and whatnot, they were taken back. They're like, Oh crap. Like this is really happening. And how come they didn't talk to us? Okay. What do we do? They had a bunch of meetings internally with the teams, the players, the coaches, the staff, basically they took two, three days off while they kind of collectively f- cleared their heads and figured out what do we want to do now that we have everyone's attention now that we're not playing games on national TV and they know why, what can we do to make a better impact? And so far, the outcome, at least on the short term, is that a lot of these owners, they're billionaires, right? Let's not forget there's a lot of money at stake. These billionaires that own these teams, they have the power to use these facilities like Staples Center. They just announced Staples Center is going to be a voting voting station. That is tremendous. No matter who you vote for, the fact that you're opening up these big facilities, especially in times of social distancing, you're now giving people a safe space, literally and figuratively, to go somewhere and cast your ballot. And I mean, I'm not the most political savvy person, but I know that voter um, turnout has always been notoriously low in this country. So I think the fact that they're trying to get people educated, get them registered to vote, and give them a place to go and you know, accomplish yeah. that goal. I just think these are positive steps in the right direction. I agree with you 100%. Um, also because there are certain counties in the nation that mm-hmm. for some reason they keep closing polling areas I've heard about for that, the yes. same amount of p- voters. Mm-hmm. So I think this is great because then it's like, okay, you have a stadium, you know what I mean? And so that way people aren't waiting in line. Yep. Dodger Stadium's doing it as well. There's going to be a bunch by the end of, you know, let's say September. I think there's going to be almost every professional team, at least, you know, one in L.A., one in NorCal. You know, every city and state is going to have a professional team. They're going to get represented um, by their stadium, hopefully, to to make that, you know, offer to the public. Yeah. And um, you just mentioned that, like, how certain places were shutting down polling stations. I think Mm -hmm. Wisconsin was one of those states that was in the news recently before um, the police situation for that very reason. So I'm glad to hear that they're now taking the right steps to kind of give power back to the people for their voting. Yeah. Now in your career, or I'm sure you have peers who are older than you who Mm -hmm. have been sports journalists. Have they ever seen anything like this? Hmm. That's a good question. I would think the 1960s from, you know, all intensive purposes because we weren't around back then but from what i've read and what i've seen in the footage that was the civil rights movement that was the most politically driven and then of course you fold that over to um the 1970s and you know Mm -hmm. vietnam war and all that and people fighting against the system and not wanting to even you know um, go to war and be part of you know the military so i think the 60s and 70s that's when this country saw the most recent upheaval if you may um and now we're at it again and now we're at it again but see this time is different because back then the the players some of them the most popular ones kareem abdul jabbar bill russell jackie robinson who uh it was just jackie robinson day the other day in in major league baseball um these powerful you know african-american athletes stood up and made their voices heard 
but there hasn't been that type of you know movement since yeah. so that was the last time i could think of that really had an impactful moment for this country yeah like i even i know that remember the phrase can't breathe um even when kobe was mm-hmm. alive like some people chose to wear a shirt you know yes. r- b- while they were practicing for a game to I make a statement that. but it was never a collective thing of all leagues mm-hmm. you know i mean now i i don't remember ever seeing it like that was the extent i guess is what i'm getting at yeah, and now absolutely. to see it in every league like there was mls game canceled you know mm-hmm. uh there was uh, i think it was like three or four leagues that might have canceled yeah baseball canceled yeah. some games were postponed nhl their playoffs the hockey games were canceled um mls soccer um so yeah to your point they they've all kind of taken this collective you know step together saying we're all in this we're all in this together and let's figure this out and you know stand in solidarity um but it's crazy that it's taken this long to get to this point but i think also the players recognize how valuable this moment is and how much power they have by using their voice cuz yeah. they're on a pedestal you know they're they're talking to the press whether it's by v- virtual zoom or in person every single day so they're on tv they're in the newspapers they're online their voice can be heard they just need to be using it in a um in a, in a positive light and i think that's what they're trying to do now yeah so should be interesting to see i mean we got four more months mm. And let's see what it for the election or just for the year. For the year, I'm talking <laughs> yeah. the year, and uh, and including the election in that, I feel like things are going to be very interesting either way. Yeah, with, exactly. You know? It's hard to ignore the election coming up, regardless of who you you know ride with, yeah. because of the impact that it could it will make no matter who, who wins. wins. Yeah, Correct. it's just yeah. a big deal. And I mean, we can go down the whole two party system. I think it's a flawed system personally, but um, that's what we have so yeah. you pick you pick red or blue and you roll with it and see what happens but i'm just glad that um people are actually standing up and speaking out and i just think the more people that vote because you've heard the old expression like my vote doesn't count like whatever like people are like very negative about it oh because of the electoral votes yeah. yeah exactly so like i get it from that perspective but at the same time if you don't vote then your voice literally is not heard so what do you have to lose it doesn't cost you anything maybe a little bit time to get down to the polling station, but um, it's like a right, you know, as being an American citizen, you should be proud to be able to do that. Yeah. And I just think that it's the best outcome is to get the most people to show up or mail in whatever the version of your ballot is. Just <laughs> make sure that you stamp it and send it off to the right place. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, should be, should be interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, but what do you think is going to happen with the music industry? I think it's the most challenging of all entertainment because like we mentioned, the the venues, they've been closed. They've been dormant, right? Like I, when was the last concert you went to? Just out of curiosity. Uh, I, I want to say it was, uh, when did Gary Clark Jr. play? Uh, Hollywood Bowl? No. Uh, I went to somewhere in like, it was either him or Lana Del Rey in October. Okay, so it's been a while. Yeah. The last one I went while. to was Atmosphere, hip hop group. They were in San Diego. This was in February. Mm. I got to photograph that show and did a review. So that's from February to now, August. That's a long freaking time. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, these places are just, they're just boarded up basically. They're just closed. And that's why they're result, re- resulting in these like drive in concerts or comedy shows because, or movies because that's all they have right now. So when they postponed Coachella, for example, they said, okay, it's not going to happen in April. We're going to do it in October. I was like, man, that sucks, but okay, I'll wait six months. And if it's safe, then in like, what was it? June or July? They're like, you know what? October, just kidding. We're just going to skip. We're going to skip 2020. How about the whole world just skips 2020? We're just going to go to 2021 and we'll, we'll see you guys back in the desert in April. Yeah. And I was like, great. I have to wait another year. Okay, whatever. But if it's a safe thing. I just don't know. I don't think a lot of experts know when is the right time to allow thousands of people potentially in a large gathering together. I mean, not to bring up the politics again, but this did happen not too long ago when Trump did hit one of his rallies in like Oklahoma, I think it was in Tulsa. Mm. And he had thousands of people, right? And people were like, is this the right 
thing to be doing from like a literally from a, a medical standpoint that should you be having a large crowd because they've been telling us to distance right mm -hmm. and now you're telling everyone to come together one of the guys i think his name was herman cain c-a-i-n he ran for president previously he ends up contracting covid and dying no more than maybe six weeks eight weeks after that event happened i'm not pointing fingers saying that's exactly the result of his you know um appearance ended up with him dying but it definitely it definitely let, seems that possible and um it just looks you know optics it looks bad um you know unfortunate that anyone loses their lives due to the virus but that's the risk right like are you willing to take the risk to go to coachella to have three days of fun but then you might get internally sick or do you just watch it from a computer for now and wait till they bring it back but you know, circling back to what you originally asked, like, how does it affect, you know, the music industry? Like, I think they're going to have to start off slowly. They're going to have to limit the ticket sales and spread it out so you're not f at full capacity. Let's say a venue holds a 1,000 people, the House of Blues or something. Maybe you only do 250, 300 people and just make sure that they're not standing on top of each other. I mean, do you think there's going to be uh, a vaccine in the immediate future? Uh, it could be in the beginning of the year, the earliest. Okay. Yeah. I mean, some people think that the vaccine will cure everything. I hope so, if that's the case. Yeah. I have no idea. I'm not yeah. a medical expert by any stretch. Yeah. Um, some people, I'm sure you've heard this too, people are like, oh, I'm not going to take a vaccine. Like, I don't need to do that. Like, my immune system's strong enough. So there's like some of those people, right? Yeah. And then there's people who say, let my friend Steve try it first. Let's see how it works on him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, like, it's kind of like a trial and error thing because this yeah. is all an unknown, right? It's all an unknown, right? So I don't think I have a great answer to your question, but I'm just trying to think of how they can safely put events on in person because I think we're starting to get tired of Zoom conference calls and mm -hmm. watching things from yeah. our computers. But eventually they're going to have to figure out a way to... I mean, people are still flying. They're, they're booking flights now at full capacity, so they're figuring out a way to do it safely, I believe, in that sense. Mm -hmm. I know that's a shorter, smaller sample size, but um, I just, I, I'm eager myself as a journalist. I would like to get back into the field and see what it's like. Yeah. Uh, so, well, I guess we'll have to wait and see. Yes. Um, I think we're all learning together. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's a... Uh, as a music fan, you know, and have, loving, I used to love to go, I went to Coachella for like seven years co consecutively until I turned 30. I was like, my <laughs> knees can't take it anymore. <laughs> um, but it, it, it's, I'm not ready and I don't think I will be ready next year for that, but that's just me mm -hmm. as a nurse. Sure. You know what I mean? Just having seen certain things that I'm just, I'm probably going to wait out 2021. <laughs> Fair that, enough. I that's mean, just me. You're, but you're, I'm, you're on the front line. So yeah. you're, you're, you see this more than most. Yeah. So I'm not here to judge anyone if yeah. they, you know, because I also realize people are going crazy. You mm -hmm. know, um, I'm a homebody and I was doing great the first six months, you know, mm -hmm. but then I'm like, I, I need some interaction, you exactly. know, like, okay, I'll go to the Orange County. Like, yeah, like <laughs> when I saw my friends, we, I think it was on the 4th of July. I yeah. think I went to like a friend's barbecue and that was the first time I went like into a, like a legit social gathering of friends and I didn't feel unsafe, but it would just, it was almost like tippy toes. Like, mm -hmm. is this the right thing to do? Yeah. Is this cool? Is everyone, are we handshaking? Are we hugging? Like, what are we doing here? Like yeah. you just didn't know. Yeah. So it was just like trying to find that like normal balance again. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's interesting times for sure. Yeah. Very interesting. Um, and I also, um, I'm, you know, he was just giving me a tour of his uh, place and he has artwork that's pretty cool. That has like a history um, of concerts. So I'm s I'm looking at the Black Sabbath um, one. Do you want to tell people about oh, this yeah. one? I mean, like I mentioned before, just a music fan in general. So when I would go to concerts in the past, some of these concerts, you know, they have the merch table, right? Mm -hmm. They always have like a T-shirt. They might have uh, stickers, you know, in the vinyl or CDs, whatever album music you want to get in the, whatever format you want to get. But then they always have the poster. And for some reason, that always stuck out, stood out to me like as a memento, but also as a piece of actual art that you can frame and put on your wall and be like, yeah, I was at that concert. Yeah. I, I went there with my ex-girlfriend and we had these great memories. You know, there's always a story to be told. Um, so I just became a fan and started collecting them, I guess, in general. Um, I you know I gave you the tour earlier. Black Keys are definitely one of my uh, most 
popular bands that I've seen and I've collected a lot of their concert yeah. posters. The one you just mentioned, the Black Sabbath, I mean, that was called the End Tour. So it was their final U.S. tour as a band. My dad was a fan of them growing up and always gave me their records. And I was like, man, I got to see these guys live. I happened to live in New York City at the time. They were playing at Madison Square Garden. And actually, funny story that comes from this poster, my friend Rebecca, who lives in Orange County now, but also was living in New York City at the time, worked for Madison Square Garden, the venue. She was able to obtain one of the posters for me because they sold out super quick. I wasn't even in the venue. I was texting. I was like, go to the merch booth, grab me a poster, I'll pay you whatever. I probably cost like 20 or 30 bucks, but you could probably resell them for like hundreds now. Yeah, and pretty they, neat. It's just like the artwork. It's like it's psychedelic in certain phases and it's just cryptic in others. But Chuck Sperry, shout out to the artist himself. I should have name dropped him earlier. Chuck Sperry or Yo Squirt on Instagram. Um, he's this dude from the Bay Area and he's been doing it since like probably the 70s, maybe yeah. even earlier. And he's just a legend and he just makes amazing artwork and I'm just l- lucky just to have a few of his pieces. Yeah, yeah. You have really nice uh, art, like yeah. well, wall art. So <laughs> I'm in love with it. this one. So. Yes, that's another Chuck Sperry, the original. I know people are listening can't see it, but yeah. if you just look up the word Liberty by Chuck Sperry, it's this woman with this long, flowing, amazing hair, and it's an original piece. And uh, again, right time, right place. I went to an art gallery showing of his in Santa Monica. I was able to get that one. But I can't draw for shit. I don't know about you. I'm not artistic in that sense. I've never been good at painting, drawing, anything. I'm like stick figures. That was like the basis of my, you know, elementary school drawing days. <laughs> so anytime I see good artwork, I appreciate it that much more. Yeah. 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 I, I love this one here. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's she's, great. She's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do you have any pieces of art that speak out to you in general? Not music related. Mm, I like this um, artist. Um, oh, I cannot. They have like this whole clothing line and I cannot think of their name. But I'm debating about getting prints and mm-hmm. I'm grabbing my phone and I apologize because I have a horrible memory. Nah, that's what it's for. The memory. <laughs> well, for this, um, v- Valfrey. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Let me see. Okay. Valfrey, sure. Valfrey, yeah. yeah. I like a lot of what they put out and there's things that I'm like, I, I want to print, get that print and put it. But I'm, I'm like a person who thinks sits on it never pulls the trigger so that's that's where i'm at right now well that's what you said about the podcast to begin with but you did pull the trigger i did it took me a while so i'm on this one now i'm on this boat (laughs) is that is that a local artist you know i don't know but i really really like so one of my friends had posted some art so if you ever see me post like caricatures Mm -hmm. of like that look very gothic yeah like very sexual feminine i really i don't know why i'm like intrigued by that Mm -hmm. so i like the gothic dark rock kind of feel to it like vintage mm-hmm. you know so i she posted it and i was i went through the profile i was like wow i really like these pieces and yeah. so then i started following and i'm like i'm obsessed there obsessed you go. like <laughs> it's awesome well if you can get a piece and put i it can on your but wall, i don't know why i'm just being so that's just me that's just you're frugal you told me this earlier yeah <laughs> yeah but that's not even why i just sit on it and uh. I think and let it marinate and then you know let it marinate some more <laughs> and i don't know why I'm, i've always been like that yeah. since i was a kid huh. just well, probably a, i don't know i don't have a problem with it but people might be like oh my gosh she's so indecisive like <laughs> yeah, you know, i say this is the way i put it you're selective i am very selective yeah. that is true um yeah. speaking of shopping local yesterday or this was record store day are you mm. familiar no okay so let's go back just a few years ago record store day was a biannual event so they would have it in uh i believe it was april mm-hmm. the same weekend or one of the weekends of coachella and then another one around uh black friday you know like mm-hmm. november yeah and basically record stores around the country independent record stores will then get vinyl made specifically printed up by the artists that are like unique just for this particular two weekends a year so you could only get them that weekend and you could only get them if you go to the store or buy from their Mm -hmm. website or whatever so again it's about supporting local yeah it's also as a collector or just a fan of art and music you get to feel like you're included in this little club that doesn't cost anything except for the price of you know the album or whatever you know sometimes they'll do cds most of the time it's vinyl um so this year of course things are much different and you can't necessarily go to all the stores you want to but i was just 
persistent and I was searching on their website and they had a list of all the local record shops and there was one record I was looking for, Billie Eilish. She did a live album from Third Man Records. Are you familiar with Third Man? That's Jack White from the White Stripes mm. or just Jack White as himself. That's his record label. Oh, wow. And he has his own record label and recording studio in uh, Nashville. Mm-hmm. And he'll have musicians periodically come through there and do record. And they literally will record straight to vinyl in the studio. Like it's unheard of. It's like one of the rare places that can do that. Oh, wow. So she did a live show there. And that's what you're looking at right here is this copy of the album. So shout out <laughs> Factory Records in Costa Mesa. I found them online. I called them up. They had one copy left. I said, please, crying out loud, hold it under Michael. I will be there in like 20 minutes. The guy was like, no problem. I got you. And I (laughs) I cruised down there. It was a little hole in the wall. I could show you a picture of what the place looked like. You would have no idea. It's like on the back side of a building that has a Starbucks drive through in the front and it just has a sign on the side of the building that says record store with an arrow pointing to the back. <laughs> well, where am I going? And I just found this little hole in the wall, but it was a gem. And that's yeah. kind of, I think the discovery phase of music is also something that always appealed to me. Yeah. The whole digging through the crates, looking for that vinyl record. But this obviously was a predetermined weekend where there was going to be lots of things being sold. This particular, uh, record just for some reason I just wanted to hear it and the only way I could do that is buying it in person so yeah. I was a stoked on that and I'm sure you've noticed that in the last um was it uh maybe last five years or ten years uh, the record players were back in fashion there's a boom of it for yeah. sure the vinyl explosion has definitely come back I think vinyl now is the second most like profitable margin in music beyond obviously like downloading yeah like it used to be cds and everything any other version you know cassettes whatever but now vinyl has had this emergence and have you ever been to amoeba for example yes yes Such, so they're actually in the process of opening up a, their new location um obviously things are probably pushed back because of covid but they moved from their famous location on sunset just a few blocks away but it's supposed to be almost as big and just even better and like yeah. newer brighter yeah. <laughs> you know and fresh paint of, paint a coat a yeah. fresh coat of paint um but yeah they have been like the number one place i remember i went to a record store day for example there like five years ago and it was on um black friday mm-hmm. so i got up crack of dawn my aunt lives in la i stayed at her place overnight drove down the street i got in line at like 7 a.m there's a line three three blocks down from the entrance, I was like, man, I'm this late, like already at 7 a.m. They came down the, the sidewalk, the employees, with coffee and donuts for all of the, the, the patrons that were waiting in line to shop. And they give you like a, a printout of everything that's available. And you just literally check off, okay, I want this album, I want this album, I want this single. And then when you get to the front, they're like, all right, we're going to go f- grab what we still have available And they actually had a whiteboard that would sell this sold out, this sold out. So they give you like live updates. Mm -hmm. So it was just like a community experience. experience, Yes. Um, So I kind of miss out on that, you know, part of it. But that also got me into music in general and just the whole collecting and listening. And vinyl just, I don't know why, it just has a real crisp authenticity to it. Yeah. And it's it's interesting just to see the comeback of the our generation being Mm -hmm. like, oh, we want that. And then all of a sudden you had companies making you know, record players and all of a sudden it was like cool, you mm-hmm. know, it, they didn't look like our parents or grandparents record players. They were like different pink. Yes. I want a pink one, you know, right, like. <laughs> right. my dad gave me his old record player and like, I love him for that, but it wasn't even like in working condition and it wasn't <laughs> worth, it was almost like a salvage thing, right? Like it would cost yeah. more to repair it than just to buy a new one. So I just held on to it for like nostalgic purposes, but I ended up buying a turntable when I was in New York city and very, very happy with my uh, purchase on yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I remember, you know, as a kid, um, I would, not a, a kid, I guess I was a young adult. I was when, You know, I would take my Jetta. I had a Jetta at the time and I would drive to the store mm-hmm. just to buy like the new albums that were coming out because yes. we didn't have MP3, right. you know, at the time. And that was a huge experience for me. I was mm-hmm. like, I'm going to Hollywood. Right. You know, like New Music Tuesday, right? Yeah, that was back I'm, in the day. I'm going in my Jetta, you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> and then you play it in your car. Yeah. And then you rock out. And yep. this is like how you test out the music. Is it going to 
make me get into a good vibe while driving down Sunset or wherever. Yeah. Um, so it, it was kind of sad, I guess, once it was convenient, you know, when Napster came around and uh, we're all downloading music, right? It's very convenient. Yes. But everything started to change for the record, you know. The, the music uh, industry definitely saw a shift because not out of not out of choice either right it was they were having they were having to navigate this new world that mm-hmm. they didn't know anything about and do you remember famously Lars Ulrich the yeah. drummer from Metallica yeah. he was going after he was oh, the poster yeah. boy for like anti digital downloads and you know he he obviously rivaled Napster and was suing them that to have their music taken down but if you look back over history he actually helped the music industry by standing up for the artists saying, no, we deserve royalties for getting paid for music that's being streamed online illegally. So now when you listen to something on Spotify, the artist gets whatever, a 20, certain cut, yeah. 20, 30 cents, whatever it costs, you know, whatever the cost is per song per play, but maybe give Metallica some credit for helping the artists in that yeah. avenue. Yeah. Yeah. You can, but like. it was crazy that it came from like piracy to now, profitability <laughs> yeah well you, you got to join them if, if that's what people are doing it because it's more convenient mm-hmm. right and then as the internet got bigger and bigger it was convenience for me yeah i don't know about you but for me it was convenience and it's like one less trip to take or you know stuff like right. that or but it, it's nice to see you know the record player coming back and you know you go to a store mm. and they have a little record section now yeah. it could be like urban outfitters you know and exactly. they're selling like records i'm like oh, okay like yeah. so i mean there's nothing i don't think we're ever going to shift away now from the digital side of music and mm-hmm. just the accessibility of just going on your phone and going, i want to listen to that song right now yeah <clears throat> excuse me but the physical touch of the record or the cd or whatever and having these conversations in person with the record store clerk or whatever, yeah. like you can't mimic that online. No. So there's still that nostalgic you know, aspect to it. Do you remember, I don't know if you ever did this, but you would have to wait for a song to come out on the radio and I would hit record. <laughs> did you ever do that? I, I was obsessed with music growing up and I literally would be like, I, I, I like this song and I would have mm. to wait and listen to the radio station. Then, you know, you'd have to, fortunately, they always talked over the songs. Right. But I would hit record on my tape and then, you know, it was like that and like kids now are never going to experience that, you know? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> boom boxes, are yeah. they still a thing? Like um, if you go to like, you know, a, a garage sale, you might find one, but that was basically what you're talking about right like just hitting record on the tape deck so you can listen to that song again from the radio yeah yeah that's definitely i didn't do it personally but i know friends that did so yeah yeah, that was those were good times i i did it and you would put tape or like you know the cassettes have like those Mm -hmm. two holes on the top i would put tape in there There to record and i don't know first of all i don't know who taught me that (laughs) i learned somehow but there was no internet right Mm -hmm. so I mean, I'm 37, guys, if any of you guys are wondering how old <laughs> I am. So I'm trying to figure out. Somebody must have told me that's how you do it. You, you, know you learn mean? along the way. You know, <laughs> yeah. it's like, you know, on the underground. The right? underground. <laughs> I learned in the underground when I was like 10 years old or nine. But, but do you have any of these tapes still? Left? I have one. Well, I don't have these tapes, but I do have a cassette tape that my first boyfriend gave me that he recorded himself uh, playing. Oh, so not quite a mixtape. Not a mixtape, yeah. But funny story, um, and we got into a big fight over this. Um, mm. I was, was not expecting to be talking about this, but <laughs> he is, uh, he's, he's a doctor now, but he was very into music. So he played, he taught my brother how to play the drums and the guitar, like he, he has that kind of creative mind or whatever. Mm. And he was like, I made this song and this and this and that. We were young, right? And I was like, oh my God, I love it. Like, (laughs) this is amazing. My man just gave me a tape of a song he made. And I swear to you, like two years later, I heard it was like a punk song. You oh, know, really? and I was like, you didn't even write this song. Like, so he just, <laughs> he totally shut down and took offense to it. Wow. You know, but, but you caught him. I caught him. I was like, <laughs> two years later, but still. It, you didn't even write this song. You know, I laugh about it now, sure. but it was like, he, I guess, didn't appreciate me saying that. So yeah. we had a big fight and then, you know, he totally shut down and. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing about it now, but yeah, no, I mean, I saved it just because I was like, oh, 
I'm going to save this. Tape. I think it was a nice gesture that he did in the beginning. Yeah. Like it was a nice thought. Yeah. But maybe if it was an original <laughs> song, it would have been that much sweeter. So he did take credit for it. But I swear to God, like I just happened to hear this song and That's I was like, these are the exact same guitar riffs. Oh my God. <laughs> so wait, are you actually, you don't have to say who the band or the artist is, but are you a fan of that music? I, I do like punk ska. Okay. Um, I, oh, why am I having a hard time? I'll have to get back to you. Um, but no, I do. I was just curious. I, yeah, I was listening to, okay, and I think it came down to Pandora. Oh, okay. So I there was like, go. Pandora is new, mm -hmm. right? I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm going to make a radio station, and the song came out. Nice. And exactly, that's what it was. And I was like, wait a minute. I've heard these guitar <laughs> riffs before. And yeah. And you're like, you didn't write that song. Yeah. <laughs> So that's a that's a funny story. Oh, so that that's the funny. only cassette I have, and I just I've kept it all these years. And yeah. so, going back, yes, he took credit for a song, yeah. but I keep it because it's one of those exactly it's memories. Like yeah, he yeah, was yeah. proud to give it to me, so mm -hmm. I kept it. So. And it made a good story. So yeah, <laughs> making it worthwhile. That's good stuff. So yeah, nice. Um, what are what are you looking forward to? I guess in the rest of this brief 2020 that we have left i mean do you have any travel plans are people even i see a lot of people going to mexico right now that seems yeah. to be the only place that where americans are allowed, allowed to go. yeah so i went to mammoth okay. uh like two weeks ago and then potentially i'm going to be going to tahoe in october okay um but other than that nothing in particular i was i had a trip in planned to go to paris in june obviously that got pushed back to, they pushed it back to august mm. And then w exactly kind of like the whole Coachella thing. They were yeah. like, to be safe. And because we want to give you guys the most, the best experience. So basically it's, I listen to this podcast called Dressed, where they talk about the history of clothing. Mm. Whether it's like one episode was like punk attire, oh, the, okay. uh, you know, or, you know, it's just to me, it's, I'm, I'm a big nerd in that sense. So I was like, I want to join these people and visit all these you know museums and so um it was uh it was it was, it was enough it was, it's expensive but basically they said we don't feel comfortable for the amount of money you guys already paid it wouldn't be fair mm. they said if we could go in august but it wouldn't be the full experience so they right. pushed it back to june of next year okay so hopefully we'll see yeah, something to look forward to i guess it'll be in 2021 yeah yeah Oh, um, yeah, 2021. Yeah, see, I'm, I don't crazy, even know right? what year we're in. I know. <laughs> well, I feel like everyone's trying to forget yeah. 2020. <laughs> even though remember when, it, when the new year, they're like ringing, roaring 20s and blah, blah, blah. People are getting all corny with the whole new decade thing. Yeah. I was like, this is just my an, decade. It's just, another di it's just another day. It's just another year. It's just, it's just on the calendar. It doesn't really affect me in the long run, but it's turned out to be a real shit show. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. It's like everything that you thought would be like, this is we would be in a Netflix show right now. Mm -hmm. You know, like stuff that you see on Netflix shows or shows that we would never happen. Yes. I feel like all that shit's happening. <laughs> 2020 <laughs> is going to turn out to be an incredible time for documentaries being made about what we're going through, yeah. right? Like in 20 years from now, there'll be a documentary about the pandemic from 2020. Yeah. And we'll see shit that we had no idea about that was going on yeah, behind the scenes. Yeah, that will only come out after. Right. Yeah. And I'm yeah. not like a conspiracy theorist person at all, but I just know that there's more information that yeah. we probably are not privy to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We will be. Right? Yeah. Um, I was supposed to go to Jackson Hole, Wyoming mm -hmm. for my cousin's wedding uh, last month. And that plans got... The, the wedding still went on, actually. But my family just opted out and said it just wasn't the safe thing to do. So unfortunately, didn't go on that trip. Um, I do have another wedding, actually, that I've been invited to in October. Uh, my friend is getting married in Florida, where mm -hmm. I lived for a year down in uh, Jacksonville. Mm. So that is still pending. Uh, we'll see how my travel itinerary and, you know, work time works out. But uh, that would be cool just to, I guess, get out of California for a minute and yeah. just go somewhere different. Even though Florida, you know, they've had their own issues. <laughs> um, yeah. But I think every place has had their own hotspots at one point or another. And now it's just like, you don't really hear about, oh, this is like a danger zone. So I feel like until they say this place is really bad, then things are starting to like progressively get better. At least I'm the eternal optimist in me believes yeah, that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, you mentioned Europe. I've never, I've been to London and I went there for work and that's my only time really to, into Europe, but there's so many 
countries that I want to explore out there. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you said Paris, right? Like, yeah, I've been to Paris before and I really, mm-hmm. really liked it. So I thought, but we went for like three, four days. So whenever I've been to Europe several times, if you ever go out there, once you're there, you make sure you go other places because it's so cheap. Oh, yeah. So the flight just getting there is the most expensive. But then it's get, like get from the, here to Vegas, one hour flight, you're mm-hmm. in Spain. You know, like, so it's it's very worth it. Did you do the Euro rail? Uh, the one that goes from uh, England to France? Well, I think they just have like a European railroad system where you can just go to different countries. No, but I did. Is it the Eurostar? I did go where it's underwater. So oh, you, from that's England, funny. we okay. went to that Paris. Yeah, yeah. That's and I cool. was like, I need to stop thinking that I'm underwater. Like, cause I'm, I start panicking. No, no. I, no <laughs> I, when I live in New York city, there's tunnels that go underwater. Yeah. And, oh, but you, 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 you try not to think about it, but you're like, but I am underwater right yeah, now. Yeah, because I'm like thinking, okay, this is the time that I'm underwater. That's when the whole tunnel is going to collapse and I'm exactly. going to die. Like, right, right. I'm that type of person. <laughs> You're not the only one. Trust yeah. me. I've thought the same exact thoughts. But to your point, Europe, there's so many places that, I mean, I could rattle off Spain, uh, France, mm-hmm. Germany, Italy, I have Greece. not been to Germany yet. Yeah. Um, I mean, Barcelona and Madrid, like those are like the, the number one and two places I won't have to hit up yeah. first just because I just love like the artwork and the culture. You know, they have a big skateboard scene there. No, I had no idea. I didn't either until I started watching skateboard videos and people in Madrid, <laughs> in Barcelona, I guess they have like marble everywhere and it's just easy yeah. for the skateboards to do tricks on Yeah, and it just looks amazing. Yeah, I went to Barcelona and I really I enjoyed, I have not been to Madrid. I haven't been to any and then... Uh, Pampalona, which is known for running of the bulls. Mm. That takes place every year, I believe, in July. I remember floating out the idea to family, and they said straight up, like, you're crazy. We're not sending you to Europe to, like, get killed by a bull. <laughs> and I was like, my cousin did it. He's fine. Like, He's still here with <laughs> there's us. There's tons of people that have survived. <laughs> like, yeah, I know there's risk involved, but, like, I would never jump out of an airplane. Like, I would never do skydiving. Oh, I've something. done it. And there's no judgment on yeah. when I say that. That's just personally me. I think that's oh. awesome that you've done it. I think... I, I, but it wasn't pretty. So <laughs> what does I was, that mean? <laughs> I was nervous. And so they tell you, the guy's behind you, right? Like, because they're attached to you. And he was like, I'm going to tap your leg, like my left leg, and you're going to put it out the the plane, mm-hmm. you know? And I was like, okay. And, you know, they tell you the instructions and I'm going to tap this one or whatever. He kept tapping me and I just wouldn't, put my leg out and he was like tapping because you, you got a little gun shy i just i panicked yeah but when we jumped like my heart was racing then when we jumped like as soon as we jumped it was like the it disappeared was it like a euphoric feeling just that beautiful, free fall beautiful and where was this uh oh it was we i could see the ocean it was up north mm-hmm. so i'm not sure if it was around santa barbara but okay. i can't remember exactly um, and then I've done bungee jumping. I've done it three times. Holy shit. Yeah. Those are like the two things I absolutely would never even yeah. think about doing. That's awesome. <laughs> so I did, I, I've jumped three times and it was like, they said that my face was so distorted. Like they were laughing at me essentially. <laughs> like I was like, cause I guess I just squinted, closed my eyes and I was like, well, mm. this is how I die. <laughs> like, and why the fuck I did that? What I'm getting at is I did it now at 37. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't do it. Oh, interesting. but I, I'm the type of person that gets scared easily, but I'll do things. So you had a bucket list and you got it off. You checked it off the list and now you're like, I'm good. Yeah. I don't have to do it. I don't have to do it. All right. And hey. people are like, would you do it again? I'm like, no. I, well, you did bungee jumping three times. Well, the thing is, is that my friend paid for it three accidentally. <laughs> and so he was like, well, I'll just ask for a refund. And I was like, nope, it's already paid for because it was like my birthday gift. Oh. I was like, I'm going to jump three times. So I jumped off the bridge. Mm-hmm. They pulled me back up. I jumped off the bridge again. They pulled me back up and then wow. I jumped off the so bridge again. Like, Let's just do it. <laughs> Back yeah. to back to back. <laughs> and they were like, damn, you're a fucking trooper. And I was like, it's already paid for. Like, yeah. this is, this is, because I don't, I don't, I don't know if they either, I don't remember if it, maybe they weren't going to refund him where I was like, mm. it's cool. Like, I don't want him to lose money. I'm jumping off the fucking bridge three times. Like, wow. <laughs> well, hey, more power to you. You did it. I did it. Three times. Yeah. More than I could do it. But um, yeah, there's just things out there like running with the bulls that you wouldn't have that even the opportunity to do it if you don't travel to that destination right yeah so So why don't you do it now once everything's done you know or or, or is your family going to tell you no 
I love my family, but they can screw off <laughs> at this point. Like I'm gonna, I'm an adult. I can make my own decisions. <laughs> I honestly like not to say like I need to find the love of my life, but I would like to travel with like a companion, like with a yeah. significant other. And yeah. I, I'm, I'm single, ladies. Just to let you know. Hey. <laughs> so that's something I look forward to because, uh, frankly, a lot of my friends are married and have children, and mm-hmm. I'm happy for them. And most of them seem happy, but they don't have the opportunities. I don't think yeah. the same liberties to just pick up and go on a week's travel or whatever the time may be. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Traveling is is fun. Well, maybe we'll figure something out. I don't know, one day when they let the embargo of travel. Yeah, (laughs) because I think right now the U.S. is only allowed in, I think there's like almost close to 300 countries Mm -hmm. in the world. I think it's like 200 and something. It's almost 300. And I think we're only allowed to go to like a handful of countries. Yeah, none of them are like... literally banned. So I was telling my friend, again, not to politicize this, where mm-hmm. I was just telling my friend, I was like, so do people think that the whole world is like against the U.S. or politically working with the left, you know, mm. to because we can't go anywhere. Like, because <laughs> one of my friends had just mentioned something yeah. about that. And I was like, I don't think other countries would ban us unless there's a huge conspiracy to work with yeah. the Democrats, you know. like <laughs> Right. Well, Canada did ban America, at least for the short term even going back to sports so um the toronto blue jays for example they you know they play baseball in toronto and they were supposed to be hosting games right like for this abbreviated season that just started Mm -hmm. last month toronto as or maybe it was i don't know if it was toronto or if it was ontario their province or canada as a whole one of those jurisdictions said nope (laughs) we're not letting american teams weekly roll into Canada yeah. and not be quarantined and go play games and then go back to the States. Yeah. So Toronto had to find a new home in the States just for this abbreviated season. Yeah. They're crazy. playing in beautiful Buffalo, New yeah. York. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a, uh, I saw a video um, that I think kind of went viral and it just go to show you how two different countries are. I don't know if you've seen the Niagara Falls. You oh. had the Canada side and the oh, yeah. ship had like a handful of people. And then you had the American side and it was jam packed. Oh, wow. I haven't seen this people. recently, but I know about it. Yeah. Yeah. So I was there and basically the person filming it was like, you can tell the difference between the way COVID is being handled mm-hmm. by two different countries. And it, it went viral because it's literally the same, essentially the same boats. Mm-hmm. Just this is the Canada side. Right. And, and, you know, I was like, wow, this is a good video. It, just, <laughs> it paints a picture, right? It paints a picture. Yeah. yeah no, I totally understand yeah. that. Um, it's crazy to think about how certain places have handled it better or differently Mm -hmm. and you're seeing how it's the outcome is right. Like I'm pretty sure last I checked U S still leads like the world in cases. Yeah. That's not something we want to be number one in. (laughs) Yeah, but we are. So we're winning. Hashtag winning. (laughs) Tiger blood. Tiger blood. Yes. Yes. That's what I was thinking. (laughs) I was just listening to an old Rogan podcast. Because like you, we were saying earlier how the Rogan show is like super long. Yeah. And it's hard sometimes just to sit there and listen or watch for hours on end. But I also like just having it throw it on the background when I'm driving or whatever and just listen like 20 minutes here and there. And now that I think he's moving to like Austin, Texas randomly. Yeah. But um, the Texas. algorithm on YouTube will just send me or suggest like an old episode from like four years ago there's a comedian named neil brennan who i really like Have you ever seen mm-hmm. the Chappelle show yes he was the co-creator and writer for that show he's a super funny guy he was a guest on the show and it was talking about stuff from this is in 2017 right mm-hmm. so trump one year into his presidency and they were talking about how the social media and the news was just like just blah 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 just constantly just causing friction and this is just one year into the presidency Mm -hmm. now we're like you know almost on four years and i was like damn he was they were that upset back then i don't understand why we're still dealing with this and then even to another degree of like scrutiny now i'm just hoping that things will change (laughs) not to get into politicized but it's like it's hard to ignore what's going on yeah this is definitely a year that i think regardless of you guys listening where you guys stand it's definitely one of those elections we I think a lot of people are going to turn out. Maybe, you know, we have all the, what are they, Gen X? The ones that come after us? I'm uh, confused with all this of is called the... TikTokers. TikTokers. <laughs> you know, w- we outnumber. Yeah. Uh, well, we are... Oh, we're, we're the, the You and I are like on the older end of millennials. Still counts. <laughs> yeah. So, obviously, we have, you know, it's been four years. So, we yeah. have 
millions of new voters and so it should be interesting to see what happens and so um yeah i don't know it should uh like think if you were if when we were 18 like there wasn't anything necessarily as dramatic or like important going on for our election at that time for the presidential election imagine being an 18 year old now that just graduated high school starting college whether it's from home or certain schools are letting people you know on campus and now it's your not duty but you have the obligation or the availability to vote this is an important time for those people too yeah my cousin's daughter um i think i want to say she's 16 17 and she's on instagram and she's posting stuff you know her views and and i respect that because i like exactly what you're saying i don't remember being her age and Mm -hmm. having to worry about those things and we didn't even have social media not to date ourselves but things have changed yeah things have changed and so there's there's more exposure to these issues Mm -hmm. and so people are now picking sides and you know making it known yeah some people aren't but and you know everyone to their how they want to handle it but i think it's definitely you know opening people's eyes for whatever side they want to pick Mm -hmm. and this is definitely going to be a year to remember that i think when we're grandparents we're going to be like well they're going to ask us about you know (laughs) tell me about 2020 sitting sitting on the the chair on the porch telling our grandkids about the election of 2020 and all the craziness that was yeah i mean yeah like you like you were saying it's it's an crazy intense time um i'm just glad that we can find some peace and within that you know and just even having this conversation takes our minds off of the normal grind you know um but yeah like the fact that social media is now embedded into like our daily culture and you know whether whether it's work related or you know your personal you know life you're always not you i seem to always be checking my phone and i'm also cognizant of that and trying to limit my screen time oh i do that too yeah that's smart because i mean when you're working in social media it's hard not to yeah but when you're not working social media then it's just there for your you know pleasure if you may Mm -hmm. and it's like when you see people politicizing everything on social then you're like i don't want to be here it becomes toxic yeah and it's just like like here's one quick example i I like twitter that's i like their platform because you can say what you want and it's more or less uncensored right you can get some bad information on there i'm sure people put out you know um false or fake news whatever the term may be these days yeah but i just i like the the expressive form you can put a, a picture you can post a video you can post text a gif whatever you know you can put your stuff up there i found a video of these two guys that went viral before they're from orange county basically they go to like congress they'll go to like city hall and they'll be like what's up bro like they totally play up like the surfer <laughs> attitude but it's amazing and they were on the ellen show actually mm-hmm. after the, after the, one of their viral videos and basically they say you know that they're here to like make the environment better and they're trying to make these progressive things happen but they say it in such a way where it's almost comical so they did something recently in huntington beach which is apparently very uh, republican and they were going up and down the boardwalk with a box of masks and when one guy held the box the other guy held a sign saying like free masks and they were trying to hand them out this is like maybe a month maybe two months ago i posted i reposted the video and i said like this is quasi funny and sad because like people were getting mad at these guys. Like, don't tell me what to do with my mask. Blah blah. I don't. One guy said, "I don't believe in masks." This isn't like science. Like, yeah. <laughs> this is like. I mean, this is science. Like, you should be wearing the mask because it'll help you and help everyone else. Long story short, um, the my resharing of the video got thousands of likes, and none of my tweets have ever had that happen before. And I didn't do any hashtags. I didn't tag anyone. I just I, I captioned at the end saying, "Stay classies." Huntington Beach yeah <laughs> kind of like Ron Burgundy with San Diego I just think people kind of resonate to the humor of it but also at the craziness of what's going on yeah. with everyone yeah everyone's a little tense mm-hmm. a little tense yeah a little bit but so, try to find the positives in life right yeah that's what we got to do yeah. um and so if you guys are struggling try to find a new hobby um, stay away from TV. If it's upsetting you, turn it off. I don't watch the news anymore. Mm. Um, I, since I do, obviously I, I'm on Twitter. Like Twitter is where I go for the latest stuff. See? You know, um, she knows. Yeah. <laughs> it's not good only for that, news. It, it, like obviously for those of you guys that are listening to us outside of the U S the U S is known unfortunately for school shootings or for mass shootings. And so, 
I figured out eventually that Twitter, the reporters, journalists like yourself are out there. We, oh shit, there's a shooting. I'm headed there and we're, they're live tweeting. Mm -hmm. And so I, it's not even on the local news or the national news. So I'm on Twitter and I have more information than the TV does. That's what I, so oh, I love t Twitter for that. The, the algorithm, you can set it to so just latest tweets, right? So you're getting it in live time. Yeah. So you're not just seeing someone that posted two days ago. You're seeing something that happened two minutes ago. Exactly. So you're seeing it in live time and like earthquakes. Earthquake. How often do you check Twitter right after an earthquake? Oh, you I think love you feel it. an earthquake and you're like, let me check real quick. And you're like, <laughs> it was a 3.4. Holy shit, I knew it. Those are hilarious. Right? But the tweets people put out there, it's like, hey, I just came on Twitter and I guess we did have one or yeah. the funny. I love Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, someone had asked me, you know, I'm an independent voter, meaning I don't belong to either party. I, I usually prior to this would vote based on the subject at hand. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Um, because I'm, I'm kind of like in the middle. I'm a moderate. You know, mm -hmm. I'm liberal in certain things. But when it comes to money, I know I'm more like, you know, I want to keep most of it, you mm -hmm. know. <laughs> Conservative, yeah. Um, so someone had said like, so like, where do you stand? You know, because like I'll post stuff here and there. And I was like, just follow me on Twitter. You'll know 100 <laughs> percent. Because on Twitter, I'm like uncensored and, yeah. you know. That's yeah. what I like about it. 100%. I was like, just follow me on Twitter. You'll know exactly where mm -hmm. I stand. Like, <laughs> like if, if like I said before, I might be like not normal in the sense that I try to stand in the middle. Like yeah. I can, I, I'd like to see both sides of, or they're both points of view, mm -hmm. regardless of it's a political conversation, whether it's a topic, a, a debate about which, who's the best basketball player, like whatever the conversation is, I want to hear both sides and then I get to make my decision or take a stance, right? Yeah. On politics though, it's so toxic it's, it's so toxic, ugly yeah. it's hard to have a conversation online because people are just already stuck in their way regardless of how you feel they're just going to tell you how they feel mm -hmm. and that's it there's no changing your mind i'm not trying to change their mind either yeah but like if they're wearing a, the red maga hat and they just have this like connotation of what they want the world to be perceived as there's no there's no conversation it's just being yeah. it's just being yelled yeah. at so Twitter for me is more like I, I'm feeling this way and I'm going to put it out there. You know, if mm -hmm. I'm angry about something or something triggers me, like usually my Twitter feed is like happy stuff that I like, hey, I found an independent bookstore, you, you know, go. tweet, yeah, yeah. you know, like, <laughs> but Sh shop local. Yes. Yes. <laughs> shop local. But sometimes I do get triggered by something and I'll be out there. You know, have you seen that? Uh, Jeff, right? Yeah. Um, Kermit text uh, typing all yeah. hard, and so I'll Feverishly. literally, yeah, something <laughs> will trigger me where I'm like, I don't, because I really don't care who's gonna read it. Someone's yeah, yeah. gonna read it, you know. And um, but I follow a lot of financial oh. uh, Twitter uh, um, accounts, and mm -hmm. so going back to what you were saying, the toxicity of Twitter. So Twitter is not for if you're sensitive. It's not for you. Like yeah. people don't give a fuck over there. That's like, you know, words uh, can still hurt your feelings. <laughs> yes. But you know, like TikTok is like the happy place, right? right, right Instagram right. is like where you post your like f photoshopped, you know, you make your, your pictures pop. Life. Yeah. yeah. And then Twitter is where you show your, your, I guess, ghetto side, <laughs> like I, where I, people are just like talking shit to each other i feel There's, that's the realest though yeah <laughs> it's true it's like it's like the wild wild west out there mm -hmm. and you know um there i had mentioned to someone that you know and i tweeted about it because i felt like there's a lot of shaming in the financial world oh. that if you don't do things you don't follow these steps you know mm. blah, blah 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 and i someone ramitzi they had like he's a big guy in the financial world had tweeted something about that and i was like i totally get this dude i was like yes like stop shaming people for not <laughs> i i know people who have millions of dollars and still rent hmm. you you get what i'm yeah, getting yeah, at absolutely. like so everyone's path is different that's why it's personal finance but i had tweeted like there's a lot of toxicity and judgment in the financial world on twitter like right. <laughs> but it goes for every subject yeah see that's one subject i am not familiar with because i don't really mess with finances like online i should yeah. say conversation wise but 
it's unique. I like it. It motivates me, yeah. you know, but you do have that like, oh, I know better than you, you know, right. my no, way is the best. No, but it's cool <laughs> that you found something that you have an interest in yeah. and you found this little sector on Twitter that's yeah. specifically geared towards that, like that demographic, yeah. you know, my Twitter feed, for example, is obviously sports heavy music. Anytime there's a new song or album, I'll be sending out a, a link or maybe if I get to interview an artist, I'll put out, you know, a link to the, the story. Yeah. Um, what was it last week? That's something that really came out that I really loved. Oh man, I'm, I'm blanking all of a sudden, but there's always a good song, a good artist, a good music video. Oh, do you know Machine Gun Kelly? Yeah. So he's apparently going all rock star status. Yeah. He has a new album coming out next month. What I saw last week, which I tweeted out was a video he did. And I forgot the name of the song, of course, but He's on the, he's standing on top of a car, but the car is upside down on the road Mm -hmm. and the car is being dragged along. It's some crazy, you know, music video, but Travis Barker is playing drums on most of the album. He's playing, (coughs) excuse me, he's playing guitar and I'm just looking forward to like that new music. So by tweeting that out there, all of a sudden it starts conversations with other music fans and they're like, oh, that's an awesome song or that's a shitty song. I don't like how MGK went rock, you know? So yeah. you get these conversations yeah. starting by that. There's a lot of judgment out there because yes. everyone, and, and that's, Twitter is really where the cancel culture really took off because everybody's yes. retweeting, retweeting. And the moment, if you posted something 10 years ago that you wish you hadn't and mm. someone gets it on Twitter, your oh, career yeah. is over because mm. everyone's retweeting, retweeting. Re- oh, man. There's I a, love it. <laughs> there's a famous football coach named uh, Herm Edwards. He mm-hmm. used to coach the New York Jets back in the day. And he says, like, you play to win the game. That was like his like famous expression. But he also was like, he would coach up the rookies when they just you know get drafted into the NFL. And he would have them in a meeting. And he's like, look, social media is still growing and new. But once you basically hit send... That shit's there out in for the world for life, like you just said. So be careful what you're posting. I mean, we can yeah. obviously yeah. get away from sending dick pics and stupid shit online. Be smart about <laughs> You don't even need to be told like what to do. You shouldn't have to be told not to do that. But in terms of like your opinions and other things that you're sharing mm-hmm. online, give it a little two second breather of pause and think, should I be putting this out there for the world to see? Especially if you're a high profile person with a blue check mark you know like yeah. you're gonna get seen by millions yeah yeah so you guys should check out twitter um if you want news up-to-date news but if you get triggered by negativity it's not for you <laughs> <laughs> i mean i go there for the shits and giggles mostly it's like i said sports music yeah. entertainment same with me i have music sports books stores and books authors because mm. i like to read mm-hmm. and financial stuff so that's, that's what my algorithm has right. um and then oh fun i guess i'll finish the episode on a tiktok i saw about uh, kind of the subject that we were talking about mm-hmm. someone had posted that they don't fuck with uh, Twitter because they had posted a picture of their um, flight. Have you heard of this? Mm. They, and when the t- by the time they got to the airport, someone had ca- called and canceled the their flight, and that had gone. You know, they they had tweeted like, "Fuck, man, somebody did this." Blah blah blah. Oh wow! And it went viral. So <laughs> that's the type of people you see on Twitter. <laughs> so don't put your personal shit on Twitter if you don't want it to be seen publicly. Apparently, or get roasted. Or get right. roasted, yeah. right? Well, my my stuff is public, so yeah, I, mine I'm, too. I know people go on Twitter and they make it, you know, private. I don't. I'm like, I, I'm going to tweet whatever, you yeah, know. Yeah. So can I tell the people where to find me if yeah, they want? Yeah, please. Oh yeah, um, on Twitter it's Big East Silver. It's a kind of a throwback to the Big East Conference, which is a sports thing. I used to be a big fan of the East Coast teams, um, so that's me on Twitter. On Instagram, it's Mr. Mr. Silver Twenty One. Twenty One is my birthday. It's just my favorite number. Couldn't really think of anything clever than like that. Um, MichaelSilverMedia.com is my website. Got all my uh, information and you know all my bio contacts and all my archived work from the past is up there. So. Thank you for having me. This has been super fun. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed it. And so maybe we can do it again sometime. I would look forward to that. Okay. And uh, have a great rest of the day, everyone who's listening. Bye. Peace. That was episode 26 of the Purposely Curious podcast. 
make sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and on most podcast platforms. And follow us on social media at Purposely Curious on Instagram and at Purposely C Pod on Twitter. That's Purposely, the letter C, Pod. Until next time, you know what to do.